Hi, dear friends, uh, fans, friends, and subscribers of uh, Cricket Happenings. Uh, welcome to the uh, cricket show as usual. Uh, but on this uh, daily cricket show, as you know, today uh, in the T20 World Cup, uh, it is a rest day. We are not going to have uh, any matches today, so this is a day of rest for all the teams. But tomorrow we have uh, two matches coming up. One is the match between a very, very important match for England for sure, uh, because they are not at off the mark as far as uh, the World Cup T20 is concerned. Uh, the other day they lost the match by Duckwood Lewis method, so probably one hopes that you know uh, the match uh, goes the whole distance, and that would be an important match. But that would be the second match tomorrow, uh, so uh, that will be between England and Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka, as you know, they are on a high; uh, they are really, really touted as uh, one of the favourites uh, for this uh, competition. The way they have been playing, uh, how they have been uh, actually gelling uh, pretty well as a unit. But uh, let me tell you. Uh, there is all that the forecast is also not good uh, as far as um, Shittagong is concerned uh, because uh, there is a possibility of storms, uh, which is not good news. Uh, now, that is something uh, that um, England probably would be hoping uh, that they have the luck of the uh, dice or they also luck of the uh, rub of the green tomorrow. Uh, because if England are going to lose against Sri Lanka, uh, their prospects are looking uh, pretty dim here. So, so that's going to be an important match which is going to be played tomorrow uh, between uh, England and Sri Lanka. So, so that's the second match. And then we have another match which is coming up. Uh, Netherlands who um, crashed to their lowest ever total uh, to Sri Lanka in the T20 in the sense they became the uh, team now to hold the record for the lowest uh, total recorded ever in T20 World Cup history uh, would be taking on the might of the South Africans. And South Africans, uh, you know, uh, there, there is one um, talk going on that South Africa could actually uh, better the run rate tomorrow with Netherlands. But let me tell you, uh, they have to be really, really guarded against Netherlands, even though they put up a dismal show. Uh, but one would remember the way they actually hit Ireland out of the competition. And also one would hark back to uh, the year, um, I, I thought it was uh, 2000, I, I thought it was 2009, if I'm not wrong, uh, where uh, Netherlands um, uh, almost uh, came to uh, Netherlands, you know, uh, they actually uh, had the opportunity uh, when they when they beat England at Lords in uh, 2009. So you know, so that is not something that uh, you can take it uh, pretty lightly. And I'm sure South Africa will guard against that. And probably uh, yes, they might do it, pro but probably uh, just probably wanting to ensure that uh, first they are uh, absolutely. Uh, settled and then they probably could go and try to uh, you know uh, crush the uh, Netherlands uh, ballers well uh, so that is something uh, which would be known tomorrow uh, but now uh, it gives me an opportunity here to just look at the standings right now now group one um, Sri Lanka are the ones who are actually leading the pack with four points uh, they have a net run rate of uh, 3.225 uh, New Zealand are following them with two points uh, with a net run rate of 0 0.276, South Africa uh, are, are having two points. The, so England are the ones who have to get off the mark, and they don't have a good net run rate too. They are they are at a negative 1.688, which is uh, not going in their favor. So I said England, if they are going to lose the match against uh, Sri Lanka, I'm sorry to say uh, that could probably be curtains for them. Yes, they definitely uh, were a bit um, unlucky in the sense against New Zealand, where the Duckworth Lewis uh, came into the a picture, uh, but tomorrow probably one would hope that we have a good game of cricket and a long game of cricket and a full game of cricket because but this forecast is not good unfortunately. Now Netherlands, so so Netherlands has uh, minus uh, six is their negative run rate. Now let's look at uh, Group Two. So over there, Sri Lanka looking pretty strong. If Sri Lanka are going to win tomorrow's match against England, uh, then uh, Sri Lanka probably uh, not probably almost uh, they are booking the ticket um, uh, for. Um, uh, for the uh, semi-finals, uh, for sure. Now let's look at Group Two. Now Group Two, India are the ones who are on the absolutely on the top there. Uh, they they don't have a net run rate. Let me tell you that uh, because if you look at the net run rate of India, even though they have four points, uh, they they still uh, they have a net run rate of uh, 0.363. Now uh, they have to really really up it uh, just in case, you know. They, they I mean they have won both their fixtures against Pakistan, West Indies, and the big one is coming up on uh, Sunday. So that will be a big match between India and Australia. Uh, West Indies, well, uh, even though uh, they got only two points and lost to India, 
uh, I think their points, uh, so the net run rate is uh, looking pretty, uh, pretty good. In fact, uh, they are the ones in their group two uh, who are having the uh, best net run rate of 1.752, and that will augur well for them because they have a game coming up against Pakistan. Uh, India have one game against Australia and one game against the host Bangladesh. Uh, Pakistan, well, they are at two points. Uh, their run, ra run rate uh, is 0 0.077, so their net run rate is also not good. Uh, so they, they have only two points, and for them, uh, the match against uh, West Indies will be probably crucial. Uh, Australia, um, Australia, I have to say that um, even though they batted well, uh, their net run rate has uh, really plummeted. They are, they are at minus 0 0.8, and host Bangladesh, uh, not only have they not uh, picked up any point by losing that game, uh, they are at a net run rate of minus 3.65. So uh, it looks like, um, uh, I mean, if you look at the table, uh, it is looking um, uh, in the sense, uh, right now if you look at it, it looks Sri Lanka are pretty strong from group one. Uh, India are, um, are definitely on the top, but, uh, you know, if they, one more win for uh, India. And, um, you know, and for India, we have, they have to ensure that they have a, better run rate because uh, if uh, they say for example if uh, they beat Australia well definitely they are into the semi-final but if uh, for a if, if for a chance uh, it happens that India actually uh, lose the match uh, then they remain at point four and then West Indies or Pakistan would catch up and then it would be catch up over there so so India have to definitely guard against that and they have to up the net run rate now uh, the I mean uh, you know they can't take any team uh, pretty lightly uh, host Bangladesh, even though uh, they are not put up a good performance, uh, one can't uh, really, really, you know, uh, dismiss them. Uh, they are uh, they are still a very good team, uh, and also Australia. You know, it's a crunch game coming up on Sunday. So, uh, looking at this um, right now, if I look at it, I think uh, Sri Lanka are the ones who are looking absolutely the piece and absolutely poised to come into the semi-finals. But uh, if tomorrow England can defeat Sri Lanka, uh, that would uh, be something uh, that one could look at. Uh, well, so from here, so as far as um, England and uh, Sri Lanka are concerned, uh, th this match is uh, uh, going to gain a lot of significance and uh, it will be uh, good to see how England are going to tackle the spin bowlers, especially uh, Sachitra Sena Naike, then they have Ajanta Mendes, uh, and they also have a certain, uh, I mean, th these are the spinners they have, and Tilgunar Dilshan can bowl as you know. And for Sri Lanka, Lasit Malinga, as you know, is the pace spearhead. And England, uh, well, uh, they, they have some very good hitters. I know Eric Sales, Michael Lumb is uh, such an aggressive player. Moin Ali has shown some talent here. Uh, Josh Butler, they, they definitely have. It's, it's, it's only a matter of, uh, for England, according to me, uh, to really, really fire. Once they fire, uh, I'm sure uh, this England unit will be looking pretty strong. Uh, but I tend to have a feeling that the, the bowling attack, uh, bowling the spinners, now the pace attack, even though they have Chris Jordan, who is not very experienced, uh, and uh, only Stuart Broad is the one, the captain is the only one who can be considered a very, very experienced bowler. Other than that, Joe Durnbash uh, not look good, uh, not look good in, uh, has looked good in patches, I would say. Uh, and um, so I think uh, that, that would be a conundrum for England, in the sense uh, the pace attack uh, has to be something which has to be beefed up. The pace attack is not looking uh, pretty penetrative, according to me. Uh, so let's see. So well, now I'm just uh, turning away the uh, attention from uh, here right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to a match uh, which nobody would have much heard about. Now this is a match which is being played at Abu Dhabi at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium. Uh, it is. It was a match which was played between Durham versus the MCC, the Merrill the Merrillbone Cricket Club at Abu Dhabi, and um, uh, I'm I'm just going to give you a brief. Uh, uh, let, let's say synopsis, okay, uh, just to get you away from the World Cup and talk to you something uh, other than the World Cup, okay. And the reason that I am uh, talking about it, as you know, uh, Virendra Sehwag, uh, who has been out of favor with the Indian selectors, he was not selected for the T20 World Cup, uh, has uh, done himself a lot of good here, uh, because uh, if you, uh, uh, what um, uh, Virendra Sehwag has done, uh, he has been a part of the Merrillbone MCC uh, cricket team and he has actually won the match for his team uh, so in fact uh, the Middlebone cricket club uh, team had a six wicket win uh, over the uh, Durham team now Durham as you know were the uh, are the English uh, county cricket championship uh, they were led by uh, Paul Collingwood who is now as retired 
But Paul Collingwood, as you know, was the uh, captain of the team when uh, Durham actually lifted the trophy uh, in 2013. They won the English County Championship, as you know. So here, uh, uh, what uh, Sevag has done is that in that particular match, he took his uh, MCC team uh, to, a, to a victory by six wickets. And uh, the feature being, as, I, as I'm talking about Indians, um, India's uh, ace uh, dashing batsman, former dashing batsman Virendra Sehwag, who contributed 109 runs uh, of uh, 97 balls with 18 fours and 1 six in a total of 225 for four, uh, which is normally uh, Sehwag plays it that way. Now let's look at the bowling uh, at which uh, Virendra Sehwag got this century, just to know like how, uh, how much worth is this innings of uh, Virendra Sehwag. And you know, uh, this is something that you know, uh, India will be watching. Uh, well, the bowling doesn't look uh, so penetrative. Uh, Rushworth is a bowler from uh, Durham, uh, 10 overs, 3 maidens, 1 for 26. Harrison, 11 overs, 2 maidens, uh, 2 for 69. Uh, Bortwick, the spinner, 15 overs, 2 for 77. Cowlin. So I wouldn't say this um, this particular attack of uh, of uh, Durham uh, is looking pretty sharp or uh, something of that sort. So, well, but uh, one thing is that, one glad news is that Virendra Sehwag uh, who has been even finding form difficult to, difficult to come uh, even in the Ranji Trophy matches, in the domestic trophy matches, uh, th that would really be uh, setting, uh, at least, you know, uh, warming his heart uh, right away, uh, at least. You know, if a person is not in form, it doesn't matter whether it is a test match, one day international, a T20 match, or whether it is a county match, or it is a whatever the fixture. If you are, if you are, if you are out of form, you are totally out of form. And that's what in the Ranji Trophy also, Virendra Seva couldn't even get a century. So that really says it all. So to get a century, I'm sure Virendra Seva would be pretty happy. And he also mentioned, uh, I do remember that, um, uh, you know, uh, he, he still has some two, three years left in cricket. And he's showing that why, at least, you know, uh, whatever statement he made, he has uh, really, really lived up to that uh, by cracking a century today and taking the MCC team to victory here in Abu Dhabi. So, uh, Virendra Sehwag, uh, one wishes uh, good luck to Virendra Sehwag to continue playing in that way because I thought he's a great entertainer as far as India is concerned. I, am, I really, really agree uh, that uh, Virendra Sehwag still has some years left as far as international cricket is concerned and uh, he could still be a sort of a threat to the opposition uh, if at all he makes it to the Indian team uh, after getting some uh, uh, very good scores under his belt like what he did today. Well, let's look at this match, how it panned out. Durham actually uh, batted first. This is a three-day game, 248 all out, uh, Durham. Uh, the high scorer being Jennings with 64 and uh, Bortwick with, uh, Steve Bortwick with 50. Uh, and um, uh, Ashad made uh, 34. Uh, as far as the bowling was concerned, uh, the MCC Melbourne Cricket Club, uh, they had Hogg, uh, uh, Vince Hogg taking up uh, uh, four wickets for 35 runs. There was a five wicket haul for Monty Panesser who is not in uh, the eye of the English selectors now. 24.2 overs, 4 made and 63 runs and five wickets for him. So the Melbourne Cricket Club in reply uh, made a 282 all out. So that ens essentially meant that there's a 34 run lead uh, for the English County Champions uh, Durham. Uh, Melbourne Cricket Club, um, in the first day they lost within the Sehwag uh, pretty cheaply for five of only uh, seven balls, uh, but um, Reese made 85, the opener was the high scorer with uh, 12 fours and 54 coming from uh, Bell Drummond um, uh, with seven fours, and then uh, Rayner making 27. Uh, well, uh, Melbourne Cricket Club had Reese, uh, Robson made 28, Sehwag 5, then they had Samit Patel who made 17, Prasanna Javadne, the Sri Lankan wicketkeeper, making 10, uh, Rayner 27, Hogg 14, Adams, Duck, Panacea 3, and Gurney 3. Um, and the bowling, uh, Harrison was the most successful bowler for Durham, uh, picking up 5 wickets for 60 runs. Uh, as far as uh, Durham's uh, second dig was concerned, after taking a 34 run lead, they put on 257 all out. Uh, the feature being uh, MD Stoneman uh, getting on to a century, 115 with 15 boundaries, so the highest, and Mikau making 56. Now, uh, after that, um, uh, after that, as I said, MCC were uh, given a target. Uh, they chased the target successfully thanks to Virendra Sehwag hitting a form at the right time, um, you know, uh, making uh, uh, 109 of 97 balls, 18 fours and 1 six. And, uh, well, they finished up with a six wicket win. Uh, 48 coming from Samit Patel was not out of 61 balls with six fours. And Prasanna Javadi was not out on six. So uh, that really wraps up my cricket happening show for today. So it's a 15 minute broadcast right now. I just I wanted to talk something, I had to keep my talk going, so I just uh, veered away from the World Cup and just wanting to 
cover something that uh, people might have overlooked. Uh, just you know, as Brenda Sevag uh, probably hitting some form uh, there, so I just wanted to talk about that. Well, dear fans and subscribers, uh, that really, really brings an end uh, to this cricket happening show. But uh, well, I'll again be with you uh, tomorrow uh, with the match report on both these matches: uh, England versus Sri Lanka, which is a crunch game coming up. The second match tomorrow. The first match is going to be between South Africa versus Netherlands. That's it from me, your host Ram, for the cricket show today. See you all tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye from your host Ram Studios. Thank you.